this lecture example, we look at small business corporations. Example one, HP Toy Limited is a company with four shareholders that each hold 25% of the shares. Now, important there for you to see is it's a private company. They'll have 25% of the shares. None of these shareholders own shares in any other company. All of the shareholders are natural persons. HP Toy Limited provides engineering services to construction companies and mining companies throughout South Africa. During the 20x6 financial year, the company had a turnover of 16 million rands. HP Toy Limited is not a personal service provider company. Then it asks, indicate whether HP Toy Limited is a small business corporation if. Right, so first up, before we look at those requirements, let's just go through the small business corporation definition in section 12e. It tells you, you can classify as a small business corporation if you are a private company or a closed corporation or a personal liability company. If at all times in the year the holder of the shares were natural persons, the gross income does not exceed 20 million rands, none of the holder of shares had any shares in any other company except for those exceptions, not more than 20% of all the receipts and accruals and capital gains of the company are investment income and income from personal services, and the company is not a personal service provider. Right, then I'm just reminding you guys, those personal services, they give you a definition, a lot of them. In this case, we're talking specifically about the engineering services. When will it be a personal service? It will be a personal service if the service is performed personally by any person who also holds an interest in the company. So in other words, if it's held by the shareholder, or if it's performed by a shareholder. And if the company does not employ three or more full-time employees. Because remember, if you employ three or more full-time employees, then this requirement is already... Uh, basically not met. In, other, in other words, if you employ three or more people, it is not considered a personal service. So, let's see if the requirements are met. What happens if the services are rendered by all the shareholders in the company? So guys, it is a private company. All of the shareholders are natural persons. The revenue doesn't exceed 20 million rands. They don't have shares in any other company. Right, but... If they do it themselves, they are doing an engineering service, and they are doing it themselves, and they are not employing more than three people. So that will be a personal service. It means then that the entire income is from personal services. So therefore, they cannot be a small business corporation. B, what happens if they employ two qualified engineers that assist the shareholders in performance of all the services, and they are not connected to the shareholders? They still have the same problem as an A, because they don't have three or more full-time employees. So they will still be considered a personal service. In C, the shareholders employ three qualified engineers that assist the shareholders in performance of all the services, and they are not connected. C is the perfect situation for them in, to be in, because now the fact, although they are still doing engineering and they are doing it themselves, they also do employ more than three people, or three or more full-time employees. So that means it's not a personal service, so therefore in situation C, they can be a small business corporation. In D, they tell you the shareholders have employed their spouses to perform all of the services. So now the people that they've employed, there are four shareholders, they've employed four people, but those four people are connected to the shareholders, so therefore that does not count as these three or more full-time employees. Right, example number two. DP2 Limited is a company with three shareholders, all natural persons. They manufacture screws and bolts and sells them to building supply wholesalers. The company also owns some properties from which it derives rental income. Right, so rental income is investment income. The gross income of the company is as follows. Sales and rental income. So then I ask you, will it be a small business corporation if the above information is applied? Now guys, what they're trying to test here is, do you know the rule that 20%, you can't have more than 20% in the form of investment income right now in this case the total income we have is 17 and a half million the investment income is 2975 so 2975 over 17 and a half tells us 17 percent of that total is investment income that's less than 20 percent so this company can be a small business corporation if all other requirements are met which they are in b we ask you what happens if it's the same applies but now we just add an extra million rands here for capital gain on property so capital gain will be added there so our total is now 18 and a half million what will it be now so now what you need to see is that the investment income will be the capital gain as well as the rental income 
So it will be 2975 plus a million over the 18 and a half, and that's 21%. Because that exceeds now 20%, cannot be a small business corporation. Example 3, GB2 Limited is a small business corporation and a registered VAT vendor. The company has a 31 December year end. During the year of assessment, they purchased a computer with a cost of 6,000 rands and was brought into use on the 1st of July. In terms of interpretation at 47, computers are written off over three years. Then I ask you, what is the deduction that they can claim if they choose to apply Section 12E? Now, if you apply Section 12E, you'll apply Section 12E 1A because this is a wear and tear asset. Then you can claim 50% in year 1, 30% in year 2, 20% in year 3. So in year 1, you'll claim 50% of the cost, 3,000. What happens if they chose to apply Section 11E, the wear and tear section? If they chose that, remember, if, it's for, if the cost of the asset does not exceed 7,000 rands, you can claim the full deduction, but it must be written off down to 1 rand. So guys, again, remember, for wear and tear assets, the company has the choice which one it wants to use. Example 4, now it is a small business corporation again, and with a 31 December year end, they purchase a computer with a cost of 16,000 rands during the year, and they're written off over three years. What would happen if they applied Section 12E? Then they would claim 50% in year 1. What would happen if they chose to apply Section 11E? Then they would claim 16,000 divided by 3, it's written off over three years, and they use it for 6 out of 12 months. So in this case, we'd recommend that they use Section 12E1A. And Section 12E1A, again, is the 50, 30, 20 rule. Right, guys, then example 5. This is, again, things that you have done. This is just trying to show you and remind you about um, rollovers when you're looking at recoupments. Okay, just something to consider with small business corporations. So let's just quickly look at it. AP2 Limited is a small business corporation with a December year end. AP2 Limited is a registered VAT vendor. All amounts exclude VAT. The information below is from the statement of profit and loss and other comprehensive income. All right, then the question just asks you to calculate the taxable income. And they tell you the company has indicated that it wishes to reduce or defer its tax liability as far as possible. Now remember, that means a company will choose to apply paragraph 65 and 66. And if you apply that, then you automatically apply Section 84E for recoupment. It means they will apply, choose to apply Section 11O as well. It means the company will choose to apply Section 13.3. So guys, let's look at this question. So there's a couple of normal things. First thing is revenue. That will be included in gross income. Salaries will be allowed as a deduction. Let's just get them out of the way. Revenue, salaries. Then we have the fund contributions, note 1.5. The company has a policy where it makes contributions to the employee's pension fund. This is 1.5 for the year. So guys, this is section 11L. This, there's no special rule here that tells you they can't claim it as a deduction. There we go. Right, but now we look at the profit on the disposal of the asset. So the first thing is the 450,000 there. That's the accounting profit. We don't do anything with it. Right, but what do we do for tax? They tell you, on the 1st of July 20x5, the company disposed of one of its manufacturing machines for 1.2 million rands. The machine had a carrying value of 750 at the time. That's for accounting. We don't use that. It had been purchased at a cost of 1 million rands on the 1st of April. And I tell you, this has been replaced with machine 2. Now, if you look at machine 2, machine 2 had a cost of 1.8 million rands. Now, remember, if you want to apply paragraph 65 or 66, the deferral of capital gains recoupment, the selling price of the old asset or must have been fully used. In other words, the new asset must cost the same amount or more as the selling price. So because the selling price is 1.2, this is 1.8, it is correct. So we will defer it. So what I want you guys to just see is what you will do is you'll calculate sales machine one, you'll calculate recoupment. I'm just reminding you here, cost less allowances. If this is a small business corporation, you would have claimed 100% of the allowance in year one. That's what we did there. Remember that, guys, you must be on the lookout for that. Right, so we calculate the recoupment. We will defer this recoupment, as usual. We calculate the capital gain. We will defer it. So you've got a recoupment of a million and a capital gain of 200,000 rands. Now remember, guys, how do we defer it? Machine two is the new machine. So whatever you do with machine two, so if machine two is 1.8 million times 40%, then you do the same for the recoupment 
and for the capital gain. But in this case, it's times 100%. Why? Because it's a small business corporation. So because you can claim 100%, the deferred recoupment is also times 100% as well as the capital gain. So for a small business corporation, guys, as you can see, these amounts are basically taxed immediately. Again, guys, remember with this deferral, if it, were, if it said 1.8 million over 3 years times 8 over 12, then you would say a million divided by 3 times 8 over 12 for the recoupment, and for the capital gain, 200,000 divided by 3 times 8 over 12. All of those things are the same, but in this case, it's just important for you to look out for and to remember that the new asset is written off 100% immediately, so you will definitely then apply 100%. The rest of this question, guys, still the same things that we've seen before, so I'm not going to go through that now.